I posted this dream I had as a teenager in the mid 60s for a couple of reasons. Number one, I feel like it, 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 it has a message for our generation. And number two, uh, I feel like it's, it's um, well, it was very sobering for me and perhaps it will be sobering for others who have ears to hear in a time when uh, people don't care to hear anything sobering. I'm not interested in getting a following. I'm certainly not interested in being uh, made fun of for this. Um, so that's why my face is off camera. Because it's not about me. It's about what happened and what, how I was impacted by what happened at the time. I've decided to post the dream I had as a teenager in the mid-1960s now. Uh, because I feel like it has some bearing on where we are in history. Another thing I'll tell you, incidentally, so you won't wonder, the noise that you hear in the background is the 17-year cicada cycle. They are in full bloom, ready to mate, burrow into the ground for 17 more years, and come back up again. So that's what you're hearing behind me. I'm not a person that is given to a whole lot of uh, ethereal, spooky stuff. And I'm going to tell you enough about myself that you can determine whether I have credibility to believe me or not. When I had this dream, I was a teenager. I was going to Methodist Sunday school and church because my parents drug me and because there were boys at the Sunday school and I wanted to see them. Uh, I was not particularly devout. I was probably your average kid. I'm not somebody who has these dreams very often. Uh, this is the only one that I've ever had that has any impact beyond me personally, so that's why I'm sharing it too. I went on from that period of time to grow up, go to college, get a graduate degree, leave my community of home and go into the big city and have a big career and now I've come back where it's more comfortable and, and more natural. But I think, you know, it's, it's coming up on 50 years since this happened to me and it has had a uh, long-standing gyroscopic effect in my life. So I will share with you what it was. I dreamed that I was sitting with some friends of mine from the swimming pool. And all of us, we hung around the swimming pool every day, every summer. That was our entertainment. We were sitting on the steps of a church that was on the way to the swimming pool. And we were looking up into the sky, much like we're looking into the sky right now. And my understanding in the dream was that the United States had launched this weather balloon or uh, security apparatus or some sort of a dome over the country and the nation, maybe beyond that, but I thought it was the United States, and that we were seeing the broadcast on the sky of what was happening so that anybody anywhere that was just out walking around could look up in the sky and see the broadcast of the launch. At the time, I remember thinking that the man that was announcing was Walter Cronkite because at the time he was a younger man and he was on the, one of the three news channels. But in my dream, he was very, very old. So we're sitting there, all of us on these church steps, just watching the tube in the sky. And you know how when you're dreaming, you know I'm dreaming, you're dreaming along, this is a dream, I'm having a dream. Well, something happened that caused me to stop feeling that I was having a dream. The sensation came that it was no longer a dream. And as that sensation came, there was a split in that screen in the sky. And out of the split came these little fingers that were folding back around the square of where the screen was. The audio was gone and you just saw these little fingers and began to see faces and they were only what I could describe as cherubs. Little childish looking beings with little fat faces and fingers and big smiles on their faces. And beyond them was this golden city type thing. Shiny, lots of buildings, tall spires and stuff. By this time, in my dream, I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Because uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not dreaming anymore. What's happened? And the sensation was that it was over. It was done. It was over. And whatever had happened had changed everything forever. And one of these little beings looked down at me straight in my eye and said, Hi, you didn't think we were coming, did you? And I sat up in my bed and I couldn't breathe and I had a panic attack, which at the time I didn't know that's what it was. 
and uh, eventually got over it. But that dream has stayed with me all my life. Hi. You didn't think we were coming, did you? Well, I knew then, and I know now, that I was uh, seeing a version of the end of time. Not the end of the world. The end of time, when the Creator, our Master, would just fold stuff up, show up, straighten it up. And uh, in my dream, the most horrifying thing, and after I woke up was, it's too late. It's over. It's done. I don't have time. I don't have time to, to fix this. I don't have time to get right. I mean, whatever it is, it's just, it's done. It's up. So, that has stayed with me my entire life. And I feel that it is telling for this generation. Because nobody talks about the Lord returning anymore. If you uh, want to see what the Bible says about it, there are hundreds of verses of very specific things. Go read Ezekiel 37, 8, and 9. It'll tell you about a Mideast war and list the nations involved and what will happen. Uh, you can go to Revelation, which is not particularly as specific. Uh, there are, are lots of other places. Go online to a good Bible study site. Go to, uh, I don't know, e-sword.net. You can look up words. You can go to ICR, Answers in Genesis. There are a lot of them. Go to uh, Sun Life Broadcasting and look up the prophetic stuff. Uh, another very good one is Waleed Shubat's book, um, God's War on Terror. But these sources, you want to align the scriptures with what is occurring in the world, not what somebody says with what's occurring in the world. Um, and I would highly advise this. If you have ears to hear, now's the time to do that. If you don't have ears to hear and you're laughing and you're mocking and think this is silly, well, then you have been prophesied in the scriptures that in the end time there would be those who did that. And if you have the slightest inkling of, of concern, you ought to drop to your knees right now and pray that God would be merciful and give you ears to hear. Because uh, it's quite likely that, that uh, this, this would occur in our lifetime. Uh, it, whenever it occurs, it will certainly be very final, that much I can tell you. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you some food for thought. Um, that's all I can tell you, uh, other than the bottom line. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. It's either true or it's not true. If it's not true, no biggie. If it is true, very, very, very important to make a conscious decision about it, not just to flip along and think everything's going to be fine. Thank you. I'm going to listen to the cicadas now.